Hello and welcome to the Daily Mill for Thursday, the 20th of June 2024. In today's Mill News, this was posted on the South London Press, londonnewsonline.co.uk. Um, Alex Mitchell, it's basically a done deal. Just they're waiting to announce it until next week. Um, so. Uh, defenders move from Mill to Charlton set to be formally announced next week. Alex Mitchell's move from Mill to Charlton Athletic is set to be confirmed early next week. The two South London clubs have agreed a deal for the 22-year-old centre-back, but official confirmation of the transfer has been delayed due to the tragic passing of Lions goalkeeper Matija Sarka, uh, Matija Sarkic, uh, 26, on, on Saturday morning in Montenegro. Uh, Mitchell made 41 appearances in all competitions for Lincoln City last season during a season-long loan stay from the Lions. Uh, Charlton have made two signs this week, which I don't care about. Uh, Mitchell has progressed well through the number of temporary moves away from Millwall, initially starting with switch to Bromley and then progress into St. Johnson and Leighton Orient. Uh, the Lions protected themselves in terms of securing a fee by extending the defender's contract before he went to Lincoln in the middle of August. So it's done and it's it's done and dusted. Um, like I said, disappointing. Um, I think everyone's uh, a lot of people are disappointing. A lot of people, well, they wouldn't let him go if they um, if they didn't basically just trust trust the process, the trust that the people at the club are doing the right thing. Uh, which, to an extent, you have to do. But it's right to bring up concerns that you have about the situation, and of course, it seems that. The, the lad himself wants to play. He, he's been playing week in and week out for the past two seasons away on loan. He wants to play. Um, like he scored against Celtic uh, last season. He's nearly got in the playoffs for Lincoln uh, this season that's just gone. Um, he wants to play. He wants to, to be a hero on the pitch. And who can blame him? Like, so... Like I said, set to take place, probably uh, announced Monday, Tuesday, probably next week. Obviously, next Wednesday, Mill players are back in for training. The fixtures are announced on Wednesday the 26th. Um, so I would imagine, obviously, what is Thursday today, Friday tomorrow. Um, I doubt we're going to get anything announced probably until Monday and Tuesday of next week in terms of players coming in for Millwall because obviously... You would want them there before training uh, starts, um, and you get them in, get them do do photographs and stuff, and get it announced. So there you go. Um, now moving on to this, talking of fixtures, Carabao Cup. They've announced it, announced this uh, today. EFL.com. Carabao Cup round one draw date, ball numbers, and how to watch. So this has just been released. Um, the round one draw of the Carabao Cup will take place live on Sky Sports News on Thursday the 27th of June at 11.30am. So next week, Wednesday the 26th, the, the league fixtures come out. And on Thursday the 27th, it's the Carabao Cup draw. Uh, Sky Sports News presenter Dharma Chef uh, will host a draw that sees 70 clubs across the Skybet Championship, Skybet League 1 and Skybet League 2 enter divi uh, divisions enter at this stage. Uh, Burnley, Luton Town and the 13 Premier League clubs not participating in European competitions will enter uh, the competition in Round 2 with the remaining 7 clubs joining the competition in Round 3. So there you go. I guess that's okay. So Sheffield United will be coming in in round one because they finished bottom of the Premier League. Yeah. Okay. Uh, the Carabao Cup remains regionalised in the early rounds with the draw split into a southern and northern section until round three. And here's the numbers. Now this is funny. Look, obviously, this is how much EFL care about this competition is that they haven't put the numbers up properly. That it cuts off at eleven. I think they've copied and pasted it and they didn't do it properly. The numbers have cut off at 11. I can't go down. So I had to go somewhere else to get the numbers. I'll show you them in a minute to show you Mill's number. Uh, matches in all rounds are single leg with the exception of semi-final ties. In the event of scores being level at the end of 90 minutes, durations in rounds 1, 2, 3, 4 and 5. No extra time shall be played. The winner shall be determined by penalty spot kicks. 
Uh, extra time will apply in the second leg of the semi-final and final. If the result is level after 90 minutes duration, a period of 30 minutes will be played. Uh, how to watch, obviously. Uh, from 24-25, the year Phoenix Cubs will embark on a record domestic rights still with broadcasts of Sky Sports that will see every Carabao Cup match broadcast live on Sky Sports for fans in the UK. For international markets, all matches are available for live streaming via club platforms. That's the Sky Plus. Obviously, we're waiting for that to be announced. That's going to probably going to be announced in July. Um, so now numbers. Let's we have to go to somewhere else to get them because the EFL website is not working. Um, this is from uh, Watford Observer via Yahoo.com. Um, Carabao Cup draw will be day after Championship fixture release. And that is obviously from the point of view of Watford. Uh, here are the ball numbers. So you got Wimbledon, and Birmingham, Bristol City, etc. Bromley in it for the first time. Um, wouldn't, wouldn't it be funny if we drew a Brom Bromley? No, it wouldn't. It wouldn't at all. Uh, especially as we're probably... Are we going to play them pre-season? We've only got one pre-season game, game announced so far. Um, we are ball number 16. 16. 1, 6, 16. Millwall will be at home to number 20, Norwich City. Now, I think last season, for the last couple of seasons, they have uh, seeded it. So it's not a free-for-all. It's like a seeding. Because you've got 32 teams in each section, Northern Southern. Uh, so that means, what, 16? So I think they will do that. They haven't obviously haven't announced it here, but I think they will do that. Um, but maybe they won't. Maybe it will be a free for all. Which, if it is a free for all, I mean, there's not much here that's uh, tantalising in terms of what we could get. Um, just a home game. Um, I am probably the only one who wants us to do well in the League Cup. I generally go to the games uh, if I can, if if, um, if I'm available. Uh, I do like a night game at a den, um, and yeah, it's it's one of the things that annoys me that we don't go far in this competition, and uh, we never have done, and we never, seemingly never will, and you would think that given our cup exploits that have, was over the course of the history of the club that is so renowned, which is the reason why we have our nickname, the Lions. Basically, it comes from a cup run in like 1901, I believe. Um, obviously, getting to the final against Man United in 2004, uh, getting to the semi-finals many times, even despite being such a small club with a small budget. Um, but that hasn't transferred through to the Carabao Cup. Uh, we got to the final of the auto windscreens. At the old Wembley, but in the League Cup, in the various disguises, Coca-Cola Cup, Carling Cup, uh, Milk Cup, Rumbelows, whatever it's called, um, we we haven't. I think we've only got to the quarterfinal twice, and yeah, it's bizarre, bizarre. You'd think is that because it's night games or? That? Yeah, I don't know. We do so well in the FA Cup. That one-off rah-rah spirit. And then when it comes to the League Cup, that's not there. It doesn't exist. Very weird. Very weird at all. But So, like I said, some of these games, like Charlton, Charlton actually on the up now, it would be a bit of a killer if we get them and, and they beat us. But um, Crawley Town, I don't know. You don't want to, if it's an away game, also you midweek you don't want to travel too far. Um, but yeah, none of these really, um, really um, excite the palate. Um, yeah, uh, but like I said, wait to see who we get. Hopefully, it's a home game and one that we can win, and we do actually win it and we take it seriously. But um, as mentioned, the draw. So the round one ties will take place in a week commencing August the 12th. Um, yeah. There you go. And that draw is next Thursday. So in a week's time next Thursday. Uh, now moving on to this. From the Irish Mirror. Something of a regular staple on this channel now. The Irish 
uh, Daily Mirror at irishmirror.ie. Uh, again, talking about a Damian Macus, a mill striker on training with Joke Robbie Keane. Uh, studying Mbappe and Neymar and dreaming of history with Ireland under 21s. Former Shamrock Warriors prospect Adomu Maku says he always watches clips of some of the world's best forwards in a bid to improve his own game. And there you go. Now, obviously, I think they've realised that putting Millwall in the title gives them a few clicks. So they're trying to find a way to get that um, on their website. Yeah. Edomio Maku remembers training with Robbie Keane during his time at Shamrock Rovers and then racing home to watch clips of Ireland's record goal scorer on YouTube. The 20-year-old shared a pitch uh, with Keane before his move in January 2023 to Millwall at a time when the legendary former striker trained with Stephen Bradley's side. Uh, Keane had hung on his boots at that stage, but Maku admitted that he was blown away by the talent natives finishing. Uh, so much so that he could rush home after training to review clips of Keane's goal-scoring exploits in the Premier League. Keane is 17th in the list of all-time Premier League goal scorers with 126 strikes, thanks to his heroics at Coventry, Leeds, Tottenham and Liverpool, uh, West Ham and Aston Villa. Speaking on the Training 1 to 1 podcast, Imaka recalled, oh, This is my first session uh, with the first team and we're doing a shooting session. And he has asked a group of questions, and I can't remember what it was, but he asked me, is you, you're the young lad, catch him and see if he's listening. I just gave an answer, and it was the right one, the right good start. Uh, even when he'd come into training and do a few demos, uh, it was the perfect, uh, the first time. It wasn't even second, third or fourth. He was just getting it first time. He was finished playing, but he still had it. Uh, you can tell he was a top, top finisher. And half the training, any session I had with him, I'd go home and watch clips on YouTube and see all his goals, how he scored them and what positions he took on the pitch. He was a joke. I didn't realise how good he was. I'd gone to watch him play in the Aviva Stadium and stuff like that. But you don't realise how good he is until you sit down and study his game. Imaku was impressive how Keane got his point across on the training pitch. Why well, it's very professional. It's very much attention to detail as well, he said. It's not complicated. He's not trying to show you that he's played at the top level. He's telling you the simple things and effective things are just simple basic stuff, but it's the most effective. Uh, Klondalkin, a native of Maku, finds himself at a fork in the road at Millwall, a year and a half into his spell with the championship side. The Lions are likely to allow him go out on loan next season and will make a call on his immediate future after he returns to pre-season training next week. Uh, there have been plenty of inquiries for the youngster who scored in Ireland's under-21 win over Croatia in Zagreb earlier this month from clubs in the Championship, League One and Scottish Premiership. Uh, last season, he made 21 Championship appearances, six as a star, and he scored in a 3-1 defeat to Norwich early in the campaign. Uh, wherever he spends next year, he will continue to study some of the world's best forwards in a bid to improve his game. Well, I just tend to watch probably the, the more exciting attackers in the world. I, I watch a lot of Neymar. Mbappe, uh, Marcus Rashford, Marcus Rashford, Jack Grealish, uh, uh, he said. I watch a lot of players that, that like to do what I do in terms of 1v1, run off defenders and get them behind. I tend to watch a lot of players that relate to what I can do on the pitch and how I can be uh, like them or be better than them. Imaku's club situation isn't the only thing in his mind right now. Ireland are well placed to make history by qualifying for the under-21 European Championships for the first time. With four games to go, they are two points behind group leaders Italy with a game in hand, and they will bounce into September's qualifiers on a high after beating Croatia 3-2 and drawing 2-2 with a strong England on the 20 side earlier this month. Oh, it was what we needed uh, right before September. Obviously, we got the last four games of the qualifiers and... If I'm correct, uh, we could be the first under-21s team, Irish one, to qualify for the Euros, said the striker. Uh, we're going to Turkey in September, and we would come home and play Latvia. And the last two games are Italy and Norway. Imaku scored an injury-time winner in a 3-2 win at home to Turkey last year. And he said, the last-minute winner, I enjoyed that. Uh, going to Turkey is going to be tough, uh, but if we want to qualify, we need to beat them. And they'll do everything they can to try and make us uncomfortable and not pick up a win. It's a win by any means necessary, uh, but we're going to be ready for it and hopefully we can. Well, just by looking at those uh, results, it seems that Ireland might have a problem in defence. If they're shipping two goals every game, they look, they ship two goals against Croatia, two goals against England under 20s and two goals against Turkey. So they might want to now see 
if you want to play like Gareth Southgate, you park the bus and try and nickel one, they will win. But um, have fair play to them if, if it's the, they're trying to outscore their opponents. Uh, like there's more than one way to play uh, international football, uh, like I said. Um, now, um, talking about Imaku's situation, you can see that this is a very motivated young man. He wants to be moving places, whether that's Millwall or someone else. I don't think he cares. He wants to be a main star for Ireland. He, I've said this in the past, I believe that he wants to be uh, the new Robbie Keane because at the moment Ireland don't really have a centre forward uh, worth a damn. Like Everyone in the last game, Troy Parrott scored and everyone's creaming their pants. He scored against Hungary. And it was a bit of a mistake by the hungry defence, but everyone's like, oh wow, look how great Troy Parrott is. Well, he's not, he's not, he really isn't. And I believe, I believe that Adomu believes, and I, I know that if he plays more football, he will get better, and he will get a chance to get that place. But it seems that Millwall, we don't want him playing up front, we want him to, to turn him into a winger, and he does not want that. He does not want to be a winger. Um, so if we're going to do one up front or two up front, uh, rather than the, the, the wide men, um, the outside left or the outside right, the way they play now with the kind of it's three up front, it's really like one in the middle and two out wide. Um, if we're not going to play that, uh, where's where's the Dak and uh, going to play? Uh, like I said, maybe it's not Emil, or maybe he's going out on loan because I think he's the one driving for a loan. Because if he's not, if he's not going to play, he wants to play like uh, Alex Mitchell. He wants to play, and as we've seen this week, your life is short. You don't want to have any regrets uh, when you come out the other side of it. Um, so now this is from this interview. It's taken from this podcast, which you can get on YouTube. Uh, Training one two one. Um, it's an Irish podcast uh, I haven't watched it yet I probably will tomorrow uh, if I can fit in between the games I'll be watching the Euro games uh, all of them even including the Duff one today the Slovenia game, those are a bit rough um, so yeah I just saw this I don't know about this channel, I just popped up today I was uh, following it from that, from that interview um, but they've also had him doing workouts, doing training sessions that they've recorded. I know when these these were taken, which was the other day, it's it's dated the nineteenth, so I don't know when they filmed it. Um is he allowed to do that? I don't know. Like is that in his contract? Um don't want to get him in trouble, but like uh lucky he didn't get injured, but there you go. Maybe he got permission. I don't wanna grass him like that. Like I said, this as well, it's only nine minutes, but I haven't watched this either. I probably will watch it um, uh, coming coming up in the future. Uh, now, moving on to this. Uh, this is from millfc.co.uk. Mill to hold stewards recruitment evening. Uh, Mill Football Club is hosting the stewards recruitment evening at the Den on the 9th of July. The event will run from 5pm till 7pm and you'll have the chance to speak to our safety operations team about roles such as safety steward Hospitality Steward, SIA Hospitality Steward, and Response Steward. And then uh, there's a thing there. you got to bring your CV with you. I've uh, got this letter here, so I uh, haven't made a massive amount of effort for this. Uh, not Well, less than they normally do. We are hiring steward in roles at Mill Football Club. Uh, Mill are holding a recruitment opening evening at the Den on Tuesday the 9th of July. Uh, between 5pm and 7pm. The event will give you the chance to speak to our safety operation team about roles, uh, such as the ones that I just mentioned, blah, blah, blah. Um, so it's Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Tuesday night of July. Uh, we're looking for individuals who are friendly, enthusiastic, professional, and able to work in a fast-paced environment. You must also be available to work on every first-team home match as a minimum, which does include some evening games. Please bring your CV to the open evening, uh, if you're interested in applying for a vacancy but cannot attend, please email your CV with a job role as uh, subject to recruit 
at millse.co.uk. So this is interesting, kind of, sort of, not really. Um, as I understand it, I'm not in the know, but obviously the club have some of their own stewards, like most notably the one that we all call Lurch. You may have seen me, he's the one with the hunchback. Uh, interesting, he's also the head chef at the training ground. Um, so the, and there are some that you'll see, uh, mostly they wear green bibs and you'll see them week in, week out. Like, oh, oh yeah, okay. They're like regulars. And then I believe we use some kind of agency uh, to uh, bring others in. So are we not going to be using the agency from now on? Um, are we not happy with the people that the agency has apply? Has the agency gone bust? I don't know. Obviously the agency, I think it was, is it Wise? Or, or um, the Bibs did have Wise on them for a while. I don't think they had them on the last season, so maybe it's not. Um, if we did, because we use an agency, we had to share with Charlton Athletic. We shared the same agency. So that meant that when we applied to do the fixtures, we had to try and ensure that when we were home, Charlton were away. We told the f people who made the fixtures, the computer or whatever it is, EFL, can you not make sure? Can you make sure that Mill and Charlton aren't at home on the same day because we share the same uh, stewarding team? So maybe that's something that's going to go away. I don't know what's going on here, but um, there you go. Yeah, is it just for like a few more stewards and they're still going to be using the agency? I don't know, but. Uh, that's there if you if you are interested or you know someone who might be interested. Um, obviously, if you're like frontline, if you're a hospitality steward, uh, that's probably your best chance if you want to watch the game. I would imagine even if it's on the TV screen, if you're like a proper like safety steward, you'll have to be like in the thick of it and stuff. Um, so there you go. Get get paid to watch watch the game um, until they, they kick you out. They're also recruiting Millwall from MillFC.co.uk uh, for a conference and, and events sales executive. Uh, Mill Football Club is searching for a conference and events sales executive. The successful candidate will drive the conference and non-match day business and manage existing client relationships at the den. Uh, and here we go. There's a full job description. The closing date is the 5th of July. And like I said, so you can see here that they put more effort into this. They got a role summary, they got key responsibilities, and that goes on and on and on. It goes on and on and on. It's a proper proper job, this. It's a proper job. Uh, desired requirements, football, sports, related background. Uh, trustworthy, conscientious, and reliable. Ability to work under own initiative as a self-starter. Ability to work calmly under pressure. A clear, polite, and professional manner. Uh, representing the club in a professional manner. This is a high-profile role. Therefore, you must always present your clean and smart appearance. Upholding and promoting the club's policies and procedures, including health and safety, safeguarding, and equal opportunity policies and procedures. You will be required to work between 9 a.m. and 5 p.m. Monday to Friday, and you will be expected to work as reasonably required to fill the needs of the business. The post holder may be required to work on home match days, both evenings and weekends, from time to time. So there you go, if you're interested in, interested in that, or know someone is, is uh, send them to the, the club's website, and uh, let them take a look for themselves. Um, and that is it. Thank you for watching, and goodbye. <laughs>